Hello, I'm Francisco Perez Smith of Man and Machine UK, and today we'll be having a look at the Design Accelerator in Autodesk Inventor 2016. The Design Accelerator is essentially a tool to aid in the design of complex engineering components, and is basically a library of standard parts, handbooks, and calculations all rolled into one. By using the accelerator, we can quickly, easily, and accurately create complex components, which you can later come back and change if you need to. So, to show off the design accelerator, today we'll be creating this uh, simple power transmission system, a spur gearbox. The main components that we'll be looking at today will be spur gears, shafts, power transmission keys, bearings, and splines. Um, to give the design work some context, we'll have the gearbox transmitting 3.5 kilowatts at 120 RPM and have a ratio of 2 to 1. So we can get started now. For rotating machinery, I generally like to make the axes of the, of the assembly visible to make alignment easier, but you don't need to. Um, so to begin with the design accelerator, we go up to the ribbon and we click design. And here we can see all of the options that are available. Because we'll be mainly concerned with power transmission today, uh, all of the components that we'll be dealing with are over here. Now, to start with the spur gears, you click on the spur gear icon and Inventor opens up this dialog box. Um, here we can input the metrics that we want. So uh, we see that the first gear has 20 teeth and we want a gear ratio of uh, 2 to 1. So we'll make the second gear have 40 teeth. And um, we hit calculate and it'll say yes, the gear ratio is 2 and the center distance is 180. But if you're designing this for mechanical use, you want to know if it'll fail or not. So here, we can go over to Calculation, and here is the very, very comprehensive and thorough design calculations that come with Inventor. So we can put in the specifications for the speed and the power that'll, uh, that we can check the design against. So for power, we'll put in 3.5 kilowatt, kilowatt and um, this will be the uh, 120 RPMs. So we'll hit Calculate, and it says... The design indicates compliance, which means that this, uh, this machine shouldn't fail, given these specifications. Um, we have a face width of 50 millimeters, which is probably what's giving it the strength. So we hit OK, and Inventor automatically generates the spur gears that will be the main components of our gearbox. So I like to uh, rotate these and align the axes of one of the gears around the uh, axes of the assembly. It just uh, aids in uh, later assembly. Okay, so there we have it. Um, we'll just color these so that we can keep track of each of the components. We'll make the spur gears orange. Next, we want to create some shafts, which will be used to transmit power to the spur gears. So we go over to the design accelerator ribbon, click shaft, and it opens up this dialog box as with the spur gears. As you can see, this is already populated with the uh, shaft sections, but we'll just start from the beginning. So we'll plunk down our, um, our shaft and we'll delete these sections. So in uh, the shaft uh, dialog box for the design accelerator, um, you work section by section to build up the shaft that you want. You can uh, use the manual controls as such to lengthen or thicken any components that you need. Um, but uh, for each section, you have to add another section, which is uh, done with this little button here. So you can add in uh, cylindrical sections or conical sections or um, even uh, polygons, uh, polygonal sections. Um, so ours will just be consisting of uh, cylindrical sections. So we'll get creating them now. Our first uh, section will be uh, 32 millimeters thick and uh, 160 millimeters long. And you hit OK. And that's the first section of the shaft. Next, we'll want a shoulder against which we can press a bearing. So it'll have to be a little bit thicker. So we go over to the dialog and we click insert cylinder. And now we have another section that we can play with. Um, so the shoulder doesn't need to be very long, but it needs to be a bit thicker. So we'll make it 40 millimeters thick and five millimeters long. We'll be pressing our, uh, our uh, bearings right against this layer. Uh, next, we'll need the section which will be used to transmit power to the spur gears. 
Now, um, in order to handle the torque, this section is generally thicker. So we'll say insert a section, um, and we'll make it uh, 128 millimeters thick and uh, 104 millimeters long. And there we go. On the other side, we'll also want to hold bearings. And so we'll just create two more sections, which will be a shoulder for the bearings and uh, an axis for the bearing to hold on to the, um, the casing. So we'll insert another cylinder and say again, 40 millimeters and length five. And the final section, which will be essentially like the first, um, which will be 32 millimeters in diameter and quite a bit shorter, we'll say 40 millimeters long. That should be long enough to hold the bearing. Um, each of these sections, you can add in features such as chamfers or fillets or what have you. So say, for example, uh, we don't like these shaft sections in the power transmission section of the shaft. Of the shaft. So we'll say it begins with the chamfer and it ends with the chamfer. And as you can see, the edges have been cut off. Um, we'll also want to get rid of the uh, edge at the end of it and we'll create a chamfer at the end of the shaft. And as simple as that, the design accelerator will produce the power transmission shaft that we'll be using. Now, I'll just quickly create the corresponding shaft for the smaller gear, which we'll put in now. Uh, if uh, you want to slow down the video at any time or pause it to check the measurements, you may do so. Um, the only thing that will really change, it's not an optimized design, but the only thing will really change is the diameter of the middle section, the power transmission section. Because the smaller spur gear is quite a bit smaller, we'll say instead of a 128 millimeter diameter, we'll have a 56 millimeters diameter. We click OK, and we click OK, and it's generated the second shaft. So we're just going to color these for ease of uh, ease of viewing. We'll make these gold, and we'll align them so that they sit in properly. So we'll say fit along the axis of the spur. Sorry, I'll turn off the sound, and we'll say uh, okay, this face will fit. 30 millimeters flush from that surface, so we'll say negative 30. There we go. Um, for the other section, we'll probably want the power transmission to come in from one side and be spat out the other, so we'll just rotate this section, axially align it with the smaller gear, and uh, we'll have this face sitting flush with the other face. So. In uh, orthographic view, we can see that everything lines up really well. Now, this isn't perfect. At the moment, we've got solid gears and a solid shaft. Um, in the real world, unless this is one component, this wouldn't really work. What we want to do, as you can see, there's no hole in the shaft that uh, can uh, there's no hole in the spur gear that can accommodate the shaft. So what we want to do is to create uh, a means of transmitting the power from the shaft to the, um, to the spur gear. Uh, there's a number of ways to do this, including splines and uh, sacrificial keys. Um, so for this design, we'll create a sacrificial key. So we go over to the design accelerator, click key connection. And here we can quickly and easily create all the separate features that we need to make up a key connection. Over here in the dialog, we can see all the items that will be created. So we want to create a key that will sit in the shaft and uh, fit, sit also in the spur gear. We want to create a groove in the shaft and also a groove in the, and a hole in the, the hub uh, in, the, in this, uh, the gear itself. Um, so we'll get started. You select the reference geometry on the power transmission section of your shaft and uh, a radio geometry and a flat geometry. And we can see the software has already put together a preliminary design for a key. Um, it's also prompting us to select the face of the gear that we'll be cutting into and a radial reference so it understands. So as we can see, the software has already put in a preliminary key, which we can lengthen or reposition as we want. But um, if we want to make sure that this key will be able to transmit the power, we'll go over to calculation. Now here, we say, okay, we want it to be able to transmit 3.5 kilowatts. 
at uh, this larger gear will only move at 60 RPMs. And we hit calculate. And Inventor says that this key will be able to transmit the power that we require. So we click OK. And automatically and wonderfully, the design accelerator creates all the components that we need. I'll turn these transparent so we can have a better look. And as you can see, not only has there been a, a shaft, uh, a hole cut into the spur gear, which will accommodate the shaft and the key, there's also a groove in the shaft which will house the key as well. I'll quickly do the same for the other gear. And uh, again, if you like, you can pause the video, um, but uh, I'll just breeze through it very quickly. So we say key, we select the, the power transmission section of the shaft, select the reference geometries, select the face of the gear that we will want to be cutting into and a radial reference. Go over to calculation, we want to transmit 3.5 kilowatts at 120 RPM. 120 RPM, calculate, this design will work, and we make sure that it's all aligned properly. So we'll rotate. Again, orthographic view is very useful. As you can see, this is all the key that's needed to transmit the power, but uh, you might want the, to extend it just so that uh, it fits on both sides of the shaft. Not necessary, but uh, it might ease the design. Um, so we click OK. And again, Inventor has created the key and the cuts that we need for the power transmission. Now again, for ease of viewing, we'll, um, we'll color these components so that, uh, so that everything is very obvious. We'll make these blue. All right, so those are the main components for the power transmission, but we'll need to use bearings in order to hold them. So we'll create over in the uh, power train, uh, um, in power transmission, we select bearing. Now we say we will be using this cylindrical face um, and we want it to be between say uh, 18 and 30 mil uh, 22 millimeters. We'll select all bearing categories and you hit this little lightning bolt if it doesn't refresh. And we say, okay, we want to put in the JIS B bearings because that's what your manufacturer is. We click OK. And Inventor creates a standard part. Oh, he is hiding. One moment. There he is. Okay, and we've automatically got the bearing axially aligned. We want it to sit flush against that face that we had created, the shoulder, for holding the bearing. Now, rather than do the same bearing for each time, we will just create some children bearing by copying this. So any changes made to the original will be reflected in the other bearings. Um, for items such as this, where uh, you'll only need one type of bearing for the entire assembly, this is actually a very useful feature. Um, if your bearing somehow becomes unavailable, you can quickly and easily change the design of the parent bearing or the child bearing, and they'll all change correspondingly. So we'll just um, put in the proper constraints so that they're sitting axially aligned and sitting against the shoulders. And as easy as that, we've created the bearings that we'll be using. So again, like the other components, I'll color these. Let's make them green. Okay, so when designing mechanical components, it's best to design the, the functional components and the case is actually created afterwards because it's meant to serve those functional components. Um, because this uh, tutorial is mainly focused on the design accelerator, I've just pre-created a, a case that will fit this design. So we'll just plonk this in. You can um, project geometry and create the case from the design components if you like. Um, and that works very well and can be done very quickly as well. So we'll just assign everything, constrain it all properly.
And if we ground the case and make the gears flexible, we should be able to rotate and we can see the gear ratio in action. Now, one final uh, design accelerator feature that we'd like to make would be uh, a way of transmitting the power from the shaft to, say, another gearbox or an electric motor or conveyor belt. So for this case, we'll be using parallel splines. Um, parallel splines are easy to create, and uh, as with the um, creating the key reference, uh, the dialog box offers to create many sections of the feature. Because, for example, uh, in a spline connection, you want a spline in the shaft and then a corresponding groove spline in the component that you're mating it to. But because we're only interested in making the shaft spline, we'll deselect the, uh, the groove spline option. Now, we simply select a, ref uh, a surface reference. So we we'll want to create uh, the, the feature on that shaft. And we'll go over to Calculation. We want it to transmit 3.5 kilowatts at uh, 120 RPM. And uh, we tell Design Accelerator, tell us how long the spline needs to be in order to transmit this power adequately. You click Calculate, and it gives you a length. It says uh, the spline needs to be 28 millimeters. Oh, we have to create another reference for where the spline begins. So there we go. 28 millimeters is the minimum uh, length that it needs. But uh, in a design such as this, ordinarily uh, the power transmission keys are used as a sacrificial component. So you want that to fail before the splines do. So we'll say uh, we desire a safety factor of 2. Now we hit calculate again. And it calculates how long the spline needs to be. So we might just make that a bit longer. So make it longer or shorter. But it has to be a minimum of, say... Uh, 40, uh, it says a minimum of 45 spline length will give a safety factor of 2. So we'll create a spline of 45 mil. And click OK. And there you have the power transmission spline. Uh, we'll just quickly do the other one as well. Again, you can pause it if you'd like to follow it on your own system. Um, so we click uh, parallel splines, select a surface reference and uh, reference geometry. And uh, this will be uh, 3.5 kilowatts at 60 RPM. 60 RPM with a safety factor of 2. Oh, we have made an error. Um, oh, uh, we want to tell Design Accelerator to calculate the length for us, which we can see in this dialog up here. So we say Design the Length for Us, Inventor. We hit Calculate. And it says the spline length has to be 50 millimeters in order to have a safety factor of two for this power transmission. So we say that's okay, we like this, we don't want to create a groove shaft, and so we can click okay. And there we have the power transmission spline for the second gear. If everything is constrained and designed correctly, this design should be able to handle 3.5 kilowatts at 120 RPMs um, for the life cycle that you are designing for. So that was a brief tutorial on the design accelerator in Inventor. Um, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial or would like to approach Man and Machine for training or consultation, please don't hesitate to contact our team of specialists. Thanks for your time and happy engineering.